You're listening to the Heart and Hustle podcast. We are your hosts, Evie McLeod and Lindsay Roman. Welcome back to the show, friend. We are so excited you're here and so excited for today's episode. This one's going to be a fun one because we are talking about something that honestly, we haven't talked that much about in this specific way on the podcast. We've talked about pivoting into education and passive revenue. Like we've talked about coaching in a grand scheme. I feel like more in the education space, which is mostly business education. And I think a lot of what we talk about on the podcast really applies to something with this specific niche too, like coaching. But This is a coaching specific conversation and we're going to kind of talk about how to build an irresistible offer around coaching, what things you need to have implemented, things that you should do maybe when you're first starting out and then just in general Mm -hmm. with a coaching offer, what we do or what we think you should do. It's going to be a a fun little like short and to the point, snappy episode. So... And I will say it is not just business coaching that we're talking about. This can apply to anything. I don't care if you're coaching people on bird watching or knitting (laughs) or how to bake bread. It can be anything under the sun that you're an expert at that you want to therefore start coaching people and have one-on-one coaching sessions for. Yeah. So grab a pen and paper and let's dive in. Hey, hey, I'm Lindsay Roman. And I'm Evie McLeod. And we are family and legacy-focused serial entrepreneurs and the founders of The Heart University, a business education company with a mission to help you thrive in your business and life. Welcome to our Entrepreneur Cocktail Hour, where business and marketing strategies meet faith, real talk, and raw and life-changing conversations. At the end of the day, we are all in this together, figuring out how to navigate the ups and downs, the messy and the beautiful, and everything in between. This is a community where you can come as you are, get inspired, and walk away equipped to build a legacy-filled life. You're listening to the Heart and Hustle Podcast. All right. Hello. Coaching. Welcome. Building an irresistible offer. To the Heart and Hustle Podcast. Becoming an irresistible coach. (laughs) Chaos. I don't know where that voice came from. from here. <laughs> we are going to dive in and we're going to try to make this as short and meaty and to the point as possible for you today. So we're going to talk about building a really irresistible offer that is quality that really serves to your coaching students. And we said this in the intro, but this is not just for business coaching. This yeah. is for any sort of coach or mentoring or you know whatever you would want to call that situation. Granted, we are coming at it very much from the perspective mm-hmm. of business coaches. So if we use some of that language, just understand that. But you we can apply intentionally, it to, you know, coaching anything. Yeah, we intentionally, the points that we are going to make in this episode are intentionally for pretty much any coach. And we wanted to start with some of the things when you're first starting out mm-hmm. to keep in mind. If you are years into being a coach, these might be some good reminders or fun things to listen to, but the rest is maybe going to be a bit more for you. If you are considering getting into coaching or just starting out, there are some foundational things that we kind of wanted to touch on before we go into just universal across every season yeah. of of life or coaching that are really good principles or like steps to have in place in your process. Yeah. So starting off, Usually when people get into coaching, it's because you have either done a service or a skill a lot and you've started sharing it online usually and you've garnered interest. That's typically what I found the route of how people kind of find their way to coaching is that they almost start getting demand or questions for the skill or, you know, gifting or or talent that they're doing. Yeah. And they either want to start teaching people how to do it or... Uh, I guess that's it. (laughs) I'm like, or no, that's it. Um, But I think there is a super small subset of people that like maybe you want to be a coach Mm -hmm. and you think that your your skill set of teaching other people could be really valuable and you could do that, but you don't know maybe what skill or gifting to teach people. I think that is a smaller subset, but there might be some people listening to that, to this that are like, oh yeah, I really want to be a coach, but I don't know what to coach. So our first thing that we want to talk to you about is when you're deciding to start a coaching business or just make a segment of your business to coach, Mm -hmm. you need to make sure you obviously have the skill or knowledge that people need or want. Like that's obviously, you probably are like, well, duh. But I will say, I think some people prevent themselves from stepping into coaching because they almost second guess that skill a Mm -hmm. little bit or they think, oh, well, I'm not like the Martha Stewart of 
knitting, you know, like they're like, I don't know everything there is to know about knitting. So I can't possibly teach that skill to other people. Yeah. But I, I would just recommend think of it holistically in the sense of like, okay, maybe you're not all the way up the ladder of, mm-hmm. of talent on that particular skill, but you might be like on rung four mm-hmm. and there's somebody that hasn't even started climbing on the first rung yeah. that wants to learn that skill yeah. that you could, you know, turn around and like lift up your hand and like be like, hey, I know a lot. Even when we started photography yeah. coaching, which is how we first got into business coaching in general, we looked at, you know, like we weren't like, What's a famous photographer? And Anne Labat? No, I forget her name. I'm thinking of like the Vogue photographer. Yep, I know who you're thinking. Or of. Sue, uh, a really famous photographer. <laughs> That's the point. I like how I like literally cannot think of anybody in this current. Who's the Sue? Susan? No, Sue. I don't know, but <laughs> is it Bryce? Oh, everyone is listening knows exactly who I'm talking about. Anyways, you get it. Like we were not the top, 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 top shooting million dollar celebrity yeah. weddings when we decided to start photography coaching. That's okay. Um, we're not Tony Robbins when we started business, co- business coaching. Like yeah. that's okay. You can still be farther along than the people that want to learn from you. Yes. I think that's a, a huge thing to know. And it's when it comes to making sure you have skills or knowledge that people want, pay attention to the questions that you're consistently getting asked because that's a huge indication of, oh, I have something that other people are wanting or needing right now. And that's a really huge, you know, indication that you are ready, even if you're not ready to teach maybe some of the things that you're still learning yourself, but you can share some of the things that you have learned and seen implemented really well for yourself. You found her name? Sue Bryce is who I was thinking You of. were right. <laughs> every, every photographer knows who that is. Like okay. y- you probably do. If you don't, that's probably embarrassing that I didn't think of her name on the fly, but it's, <laughs> it's Sue Bryce. She's incredible. Okay. The next thing that we wanted to touch about when you're first starting out with specifically like coaching um, in general, start putting out free content. Mm-hmm. Number one, on social media, email list, podcast, YouTube, whatever medium you want. It's like, how are people going to know that you're an expert at that if you don't share that? Yes. How do people know that you have experiences, skills, knowledge, wisdom, insight, or results that they're wanting to see if they're not actively seeing that really played out for them repeatedly day after day, week after week? So really start garnering that intrigue for what you teach. So do regular Q&As on your story. Um, Instagram lives are fantastic. Regular reels or TikToks or whatever. YouTube videos. Did you say Q&As on your story? Okay. Yeah. it, it shows that you're starting to answer questions that many people would probably have on that topic. And so yeah. it therefore positions you as the expert. I said that weird. Export. <laughs> um, in a way. So even if you are baby fresh and you're like, oh, but nobody's asking me questions. Girlfriend, go to that freaking Instagram story. Post a question box. Go to your own damn question box and fill it out. Yeah. Put but, in a question. That's a common ask question for the expert that you're teaching on. Yeah or expertise that you're teaching on. Or give some example questions, like put in some questions there that you're like, I want to train my audience to know that they can ask this, that they should ask this, that I have answers for stuff like this. Um, And ideally, that should be something that you're doing the first few Q&As you're doing and then people get like, oh, wait, she's actually going to answer. She gives good deep answers or he or Or whatever. Sorry. But it's mostly the ladies here. (laughs) (laughs) So that's a huge thing. It's just you have to start with free content first, with rich value, with showing up as an expert before people I think are willing to spend, you know, their hard earned cash trusting you as a coach if they don't know that you actually are getting results or know the answers to the questions that they have. Yeah. Now, if if this is, again, we're starting or we're talking about starting a coaching business. When you first start and you're first trying to get clients, like the first couple of one-on-one sessions, usually you want to keep your offering simple. Like you don't want to have like, you know, seven different packages for a coaching. I mean, even if you're not beginner, I would recommend not doing that um, for any service-based business. (laughs) Um, But if you're first starting, I would probably recommend with 60 to 90 minute coaching calls, whether that's in person or whether that's on Zoom, something that's simple and tangible. You can kind of like easily digest and kind of start chunking out like a beginner um, session with a client. Because I think when you're getting into education, you almost have to learn by default of how people learn and how they ingest information. And how you communicate it. Because I think it's so easy. You could know something really well in your head. But not communicate it effectively. And then you start to say something and you you can just see the glazed look in your, your student's eye and you're like, Oh, shoot. Okay, let me try to rephrase. Side note, also, if you're ever wanting to do a course, start with one-on-one coaching because it will yes. help you create the the teaching video yes. for a course so much better because you will understand 
what people have question wise in yep. that topic that you're yep. doing the course. I say one on one, or technically you could do group if you really wanted to. That's true. But which same okay, concept. that's uh, that's in this conversation. Maybe you want to be a coach and you're thinking about like group coaching or a membership or a cohort or like a workshop or, or something like that where it's like you're coaching people on a thing. Mm-hmm. I would still start with one on one sessions Mm -hmm. that are like bite-sized, like an hour because it gets your feet wet and it's really easy to digest. Yeah. Speaking of, not only do we recommend starting with something that's a little bit more simple, to the point, easy to communicate to your audience, but I would also, and Lindsay, highly recommend start very low price point when you're getting into coaching. And I know, you know, there's, we talk a lot about charge your worth, know how much you need to make, but there's something too, when you're in the, almost the the beta testing phase of a new offer, like a new coaching offer that you just need to figure out your own ish Mm -hmm. (laughs) for a bit. And you need to learn how people are receiving. My first coaching session or two or mentor session or two, I guarantee I said stuff that I would look back on and be like, that is not the way you should communicate that. Like that, mm-hmm. that did not make sense. That was difficult to understand. That wasn't explained well. That, you know, there's so much that you're learning as a coach too in that. Um, so I recommend starting with something that's very attainable because what also happens with that too is you're going to get more people who are actually booking, which shows the proof of concept, the yeah. proof of you're actually getting people who want to book with you, even if it's a hundred dollars for an hour yeah. call or $50 for an hour call or whatever and that get is. more people in the door that then can write reviews. Exactly. Especially when you're trying to offer something for the first time, like reviews are huge, especially Mm -hmm. on a one-on-one service. Like people don't want to waste their money on a coaching offer when they don't, they're they're iffy on if that person's going to give them the return on this skill that they're wanting to learn. Um, And so the more that you can get like traction immediately, so whether it's really cheap sessions or even whether it's free, maybe you have friends that you can start teaching like that skill, whatever you're coaching Mm -hmm. in, whether it's business or knitting or sourdough or whatever it is, you can, you know, almost do like free training sessions with them and get reviews from them. Like that's a really great way to get started if you aren't even at the place where anybody will hire you even for like a hundred dollars. A hundred percent. But if you are giving out free content on the internet and and consistently doing that, you probably can get people for a hundred dollars. Yeah. Or or less. Start cheaper if you want. Start $50 yeah. or, yeah. you know, whatever feels attainable. One of the next things I would say is I, I get a lot of questions on when somebody's considering starting like mentor sessions or coaching mm-hmm. is they're like, what what does the format look like? What should, should I come and present like a whole presentation of one of the first things you should do in business? And the next thing, it kind of like walk them through almost like a presentation slide format. My recommendation is either format, especially when you're just starting before you've really built out like a coaching curriculum or a real format or anything like that, like later on in business or in life, I would recommend starting with either Q&A format and simply be an open book and let your student come in or your client come in and ask you any questions that they have, or you present the offer, like the one hour session or whatever it is of a very specific niche topic. So for example, if you are a, a fitness trainer or a, fit, a physical therapist in that world, maybe you open the door to, hey, I understand how overwhelming like fitness can be, whether it's questions about form or wondering like, can I help you build out a good fitness plan based on your needs and lifestyle, whatever that is. I'm an open book. Come chat with me for an hour. Or maybe you present it as something a little bit more like, hey, do you need help with pelvic floor? Like, are you a postpartum mom and you need an hour session where I teach you on some basic exercises that you can do to improve your pelvic floor? Come, you know, meet with me for an hour. And it's very niche specific and you're presenting it as such. Because I think when you're starting out, there, there's a lot that you don't know that your clients need to know. Yeah. Or you know they need one thing, but you're not sure about some of the others. So I would either present it as an open forum, like Q&A, whatever they need to know, give them some sample, you know, options like I just did, or you know there's one thing that people are wanting to know from you and you go very specific and offer coaching or mentoring on that one topic of that. I even think if you are just beginning and you haven't built a brand that's that's well known enough yet, like if you are baby fresh, you have like 50 followers and you're like, I want to start coaching. I almost think it's better to go super, super niche because it. if somebody was like, hey, I'm doing a fitness uh, coaching and I'm like, uh, okay. Like, especially if they have low followers or they, like, they, you can tell they're not very established. Yeah. But if they even were low and not established, but they were like, hey, I can do pelvic floor, like, training for mm-hmm. you specifically for postpartum moms, like very specific, yeah. very niche. I, even if they didn't have a big following or a big, like lots of reviews, I'd be like, oh, I need yeah. help with that. It's yeah. like more. So it's if you're clear. just beginning, I would, I would go niche 
first. Yeah. And like a photography example, I know a lot of photographers follow us. If you're wanting to get into photography coaching or then even business coaching, I would almost start with like editing mm-hmm. sessions. Yeah. Where it's like, hey, or sign up for an hour for a hundred dollars and I'm going to help walk you through editing help. And yeah. like, you can either, like Evie said, do a Q&A where mm-hmm. you just like open it up, say, hey, what editing questions do you have? Or you could like come up with like a 30 to 45 minute kind of training on going through all the things on editing that you recommend mm-hmm. and then open the floor for questions. You know, you can obviously create it however you want, yep. but niche first is what I would say. I love it. Okay, now we're going to split into... That was kind of some of the foundational things that we wanted to say if you're just getting into coaching and some of the first things we wanted to talk about. But now this is for anyone in any season. Yeah. How to build a good coaching offer. Whether you've been doing it for years, maybe there's a couple things in here that are new that we do that we recommend. Um, Or maybe you are in the beginner and you're like, I want to start well from the beginning, Mm -hmm. these are some of the things we'd recommend. Yeah. So the first thing I would recommend is having a questionnaire or application process before they book or a consult call. So just because you're a coach doesn't mean that you should open the door for every single person who has cash in their hand (laughs) to book with you. If you are a good coach, in my opinion, you should be turning people away because you value them enough to be like, hey, I'm not the coach for you. Let me help you find somebody else. Or this is not the season of life for you to invest in this. I think you should go invest in X, Y, and Z first. A workshop or, you know, something else or like practice more. Yeah. You know, yeah. A hundred percent. So that's number one, good questionnaire application process or consult call like process, like onboarding before they come on. And then this just applies, which I put this in here because I was like, this applies to every (laughs) business of any offering at all, especially if it's service like coaching, Mm -hmm. have a really detailed pricing guide. And we have episodes on that. But I think that's really important, especially with something like coaching where somebody is investing money, hoping to get a return. They want to see what are some reviews? What is the process like? What is the investment? What do you cover? What does this look like? Just answering all their questions for them. I think that's just every business in general. And that would be the same for like a good website or good marketing copy and all of that. But making sure with your coaching process that you have a really good investment guide in there, I think that's key. Mm-hmm. Um, this also goes without saying kind of along the lines with pricing guide, but make sure you have contracts in place. I mean, if you are running a business and you're offering a service of any kind or a you know product of any kind, whatever, have I guess you don't have contracts with a product necessarily. No, but you have terms and conditions on your website. That's true. Okay, <laughs> wrap it up. Um, regardless, have a contract in place. We always recommend our girl, The Legal Page. She is just prime queen for all things contracts. So go to the heartuniversity.com forward slash contracts. Ayo. <laughs> Although, do we have one for... I don't know if we actually have one for coaching. No, but if you if you go over to Page... You'll, oh, you'll get a discount You'll get code. a discount code and then you can use that code for there anything on are. her site. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> Clink. Okay. <laughs> detailed question or detailed contracts are not optional. The next thing I would say is a detailed onboarding questionnaire to get as much information from your student as possible. So just to clarify, this is after they have paid cash dollars. Yes. Like this is they booked. Yes. And now you are preparing for your first call. Yes. And so I would have a minimum, minimum of 10 to 15 questions on that questionnaire. And I mean, I'm trying to think well, through mine. I have a question though. You're what? coming at this from a business perspective. No, I'm thinking any. What, okay. The physical therapist. No, no. Okay. I'm thinking of something a little more simple. Like what if I'm doing a coaching and I want to teach people to knit? What do I need on my onboarding question? Mm, that's true. I think it depends, still, on, it depends uh, on your what you're coaching people. Okay. But then, okay. Make sure, well, let's, actually, let's, eliminate, no, let's eliminate numbers out of this and let's just, let's give a general, okay. it should be as much information as you could possibly gather from to them. To give a good call. Like yes. anything that you would need from them. And the way I phrase it is I don't want to waste your time mm-hmm. on my first call getting all that information. You're paying me yeah. X dollars for this hour or yeah. hour and a half or two hours. I want to make sure I'm not wasting your time and I'm maximizing that. So I want all that information up front yeah. so that I can do the work beforehand, especially if it's like business coaching or something that you need a website, you need to look at their Instagram or you need to look at their work. Yep. Maybe you're teaching people how to make sourdough bread. Mm-hmm. Like in the onboarding questionnaire, I would almost ask like, what have you done in the past that has been yeah. like, like, you know, obviously. How, how do you feel about baking in general? Do you enjoy being in the kitchen? What are your hangups in the kitchen? Yeah. What feels overwhelming to you? I mean, do that could literally apply to life kind of, coaching, What kind of equipment coaching. do you have? Like there's so, so many, many questions yeah. that I would recommend. Anything that you would want to know at all about mindset, past experiences, yeah. goals, questions they already have for you and are prepared to ask you. Or anything. tangible like detail, like for business coaching, like how much money do you want to make? How much yes. are you currently making? Yes. What's your price range? Yes. Like how many bookings are you getting a year? Yeah. Sales are you getting a year, month or like there's so much. Yeah. What are, I ask questions like what are 
What's your daily wor- workload look like for you? What are you currently doing in your business? Do you have a team? What team positions are those? You know, what's there's so many, there's so many questions that you can ask on the questionnaire. But the point is, have that as much information as you can possibly get from them ahead of time and then go through that yeah. ahead of time. Before the first call. Yes. Like we this is more of a faith thing. Like we like pray for our coaching mm-hmm. students before we get on the call with them. We pray over the uh, onboarding questionnaire. Mm-hmm. But even if you're not a believer and that doesn't apply to you, like still go over yes. and and look through and just prepare logically for this first call and yeah. like look at all of the things, the answers that they gave you yeah. and prepare and ask and write down questions that you yeah. have from their onboarding questionnaire. Like I'll, I'll go through and I know you do this too. Like, and I'll look and I'll be like, okay, I have the question based on this answer. Mm-hmm. Like they said this and it's like, okay, well, wait, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. You know, obviously it's like problem solving. You're looking at all the issues that they have. And yeah. then also something that I put on my onboarding questionnaire is what was the reason that you wanted coaching in the first place? Yeah. I might word it in a few different ways because I want to know like what was the inciting incident yeah. or the pain point that really urged or the goal. you yeah, to, to be like, I need help with this issue. And then yeah. I'll compare that with like the answers of what they gave me and be like, okay, where can we, you know, where's the problem that yeah. I can, you know, come in and solve? So a tactical thing that I do that I think Lindsay probably does too is I have a Google Drive folder specifically for all of my coaching and I have folders for each one of my students. And in those folders, I have all sorts of things. If they send me documents, if they send me, you know, photos, examples, different things, yeah. um, I have all that stored in there. But I have a document in their folder with their name where I have, I take all sorts of notes, thoughts, questions, things based on their questionnaire before we get into our calls. And then this kind of goes into the next one. During my calls with my students, I take very detailed notes of what they're saying, pain points, things that I think they should be doing differently. And I put those under like what I call like my homework or mm-hmm. next steps for my students. And I take, keep track of that during the call so that by the time they get off the call, we have a lot of clarity. Any numbers that we've written yeah. down, any strategies, any things that I said that I would send them, like, you need to read this book. Let me send you like a link to it or anything like that. I've taken detailed notes during the call. So I have those pulled up at all points. I have a split screen, my student on one half and my notes on the other. And I'm taking detailed notes during their call. So then after that first call, we highly recommend taking the notes that you just wrote down and giving them a um, recap email. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, what is the I was word? like taking a sip of water, but I saved you anyway. Give them a recap email, basically uh, outlining the highlights of what you talked about, any homework that you went over or any mm-hmm. links or numbers, like she said, that you yeah. talked about and go over that. Something that you can do is if it isn't an in-person call, if it's on Zoom, record it and give them the replay in that in that um, recap email. Recap email. It's just, it's basically not just like leaving them high and dry after a call and being like, awesome, bye. It's actually being like, hey, here's all the notes that I took for Mm -hmm. you based on what we said. Here's a replay. Here's the homework that I have for you. And obviously like on the call, I'll I'll verbally say the homework too as we we come up with it. But I think it's so helpful for a coaching student to have like a written form. Like if you hop on a call, you don't have to be like sitting there like trying to scramble and write all the things and like remember it. It's like, no, you can just relax and ingest the information that is being given and answer questions vulnerably. And then after you have an entire recap, that's like, wow, this was awesome. And I, I didn't have to remember it. Yeah. It's like all written down for me. Yep. That's so good. And then I would say the last thing that, that we wanted to talk about was really sending like a feedback email or like a review request email after the call, or if you're doing multiple calls, like a, you know, a, um, a container of like three months or whatever to really send like a feedback form or an email requesting feedback from them, requesting a review from them. I personally, I usually wait like two to four weeks after a coaching student ends Mm -hmm. so that I give them time to really implement some of the homework or things that I've given them to do and see results. Yeah. Them to like see some wins. Yeah. And I think that would still apply no matter what you're coaching. Like you want them to have time to actively practice and do the thing that you've taught them to do. But I didn't want to put that as like, everyone should wait two to four weeks to send a review email. Like maybe it works better for your business model to send it immediately after when people's emotions are high and they're feeling all those experiences and things. Um, But I would say that's one of the last things. And I feel like Lindsay and I, we have been coaching and mentoring for like eight plus years. And I feel like I have so many things that I could say on this, but we were like, how can we simplify this and get this to the point where they're just some of the key, most important, Mm -hmm. like step-by-step tangible things, whether you're just getting in or you've been doing it for a while that we really see as absolutely pivotal in a good coaching offering. Mm -hmm. And how can we explain those really well and concisely in a really meaty and packed episode? So that's what we have for you today. 
Do you have any thoughts on adding to that? <laughs> I just want to encourage you, if you've wanted to get into coaching, don't stop yourself based on imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Don't sit there and be like, oh, I want to do this one day, but like, I'm not good enough at this skill or this thing. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's so, it's almost like the curse of knowledge. We forget that we know things. Mm -hmm. Like, you you know, you might do something that's so second nature to you, but there are people out there that don't know how to do it. That doesn't mean you have to, you know, monetize every single skill that you know. But if you have a passion for teaching other people what you know, Mm -hmm. I promise there are people out there that want to learn it, that are seeking answers. And you, I mean, they could go to the library and read an encyclopedia or they could pay you $400 for an hour. I mean, you know, like there's obviously things. They could take a course, they could attend a workshop, they could, you know, go to a conference or whatever. But I will say there is something so incredible and powerful in this day and age about the ability to make money from home by opening Zoom and Mm -hmm. giving people knowledge that is life-changing that you know that they want to pay for. That is valuable. So So don't let imposter syndrome get in your way. I love it. And I will tag onto this. Being a coach is one of the best things in the world. And I literally, I don't think I will ever stop coaching because I love it so flipping much and seeing the impact that you can have on somebody's life by just sharing the things that you know. It is life-changing for you and for your students. So if you've felt that pull before, I just want to encourage you. It is incredible beyond words. I love it so much. And hopefully some of what we shared today was encouraging or insightful or gave you a bit of a start running start because we are here to cheer you on free on this podcast. And hey, honestly, I wasn't planning to say this at all. If you want to be a coach or have a better coaching offering. I was literally going to be like, as soon as you were done talking, I was like, if you need business coaching, we are some two options that you could. We we love it. And (laughs) I feel like this was like a 1% of all the things we do as a coach. I feel like these are some of the biggest and foundational, but if you want more insight on building a coaching offering or if you're just an entrepreneur listening to this that you're like dang they do all that or you know and that's not even all of it if that's some of the things that you want to learn or grow in or build your business we're here that wasn't this was not an intentional pitch episode at all I mean I I was gonna make I was gonna make it intentional I don't know why I'm clinking (laughs) in the middle of us talking she's like let's cheers (laughs) I was I was gonna pay but basically saying like if you want knowledge and you yes. got so much from this podcast episode, like we are here to help you. Yes. And I, maybe I'll, sh- I'll say that from a position as a coach, do not get into it for the money. It yeah. is not about the money. It is about changing people's lives with yeah. whatever skill that you're teaching. And the money's great. It is great, but, but it's not the end all be no. all. And truly, like she said, like seeing somebody's eyes light up mm-hmm. in like a click moment happen of they were like, wow. Or, you know, you teach them something and then they come back weeks later and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Like yes. we've had so many coaching students and even workshop students and past course students that have come back and they're like, wow, the things that you just taught me, like I'm seeing actual progress and change. And, like and, my life has changed because yeah. I learned this from you and implemented it. And yeah, I will never being be like, I was able to buy my first home because mm-hmm. like you taught me this, like that there is nothing like like that. Yes. Um, obviously that's a business coach example, but still like but no matter what, <laughs> um, it's amazing. So if you want to be a coach, you can, and it's awesome. Yes. Now go kick some butt today and we'll see you on the next episode.